Thank you so much, TJ. Good morning, Board of Commissioners. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule this morning to participate in this special call meeting. First, I would like to welcome our citizens who are joining us through this virtual technology uh, mode and want to assure you that our, the Board of Commissioners value your participation in county government. Before we start our meeting, I would like to extend a public happy birthday to Vice Chairman District 2 Kelly Robinson. Happy birthday and best wishes to you on your special day. We will call this August 6th, 2020 special call meeting to order. For purposes of introductions, we have the following. Commissioners on the line. Could you start by just uh, acknowledging your presence? I'll start with District 1 Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, if you could just acknowledge that you're here. And then. Okay, well, let me let me start with, I'll just call roll and just, just tell me if you're present. Vice Chairman and District 2, uh, Commissioner Kelly Robinson. Present. Commissioner uh, Terenia Carthen, District 3. Present and accounted for. Okay, thank you. District 4, Commissioner Ann Jones-Guider. Present. Okay, and District 1, Commissioner Henry Mitchell III. Present. Okay, and Ramona Jackson Jones, Chairman of the Board of Commissioners, present. Also, I just would like to acknowledge our county administrator who's here with us today. We have Tiffany Stewart Stanley, our External Affairs Director as well, and we have our legislative aides. And thank you all for being here. And I'm trying to make sure and thank you so much, our Com Communications Director, for being here as well. Uh, it may be a host of other people on here. I'm just unable to see your names. I see that Lisa Crossman has joined us as well. So with that being said this morning, um, our first business uh, order business this morning, I would like to just uh, say that uh, this will entail an update from our county administrator. He will provide an update first and I'm gonna, on my agenda, I'm moving around just a little bit, Board of Commissioners. Um, Mark Teal will uh, bring a present, just an update regarding the driver services and the CDL uh, facility that's uh, upcoming or forthcoming in Douglas County. Board of Commissioners, we would uh, certainly, we would be remiss not to thank our sensational state legislative uh, delegation for going above and beyond the call of duty to seek approval and funding for new driver services here and CDL facility here in Douglas County. This is a significant milestone for Douglas County. And I would like to publicly thank our Representative Roger Bruce, Representative William Bodie, Representative Kimberly Alexander, Representative Micah Gravely, Representative Sharon Beasley Teague, and Representative Jay Collins. I would like to extend a very special thanks to Senator Donzella James and Senator Mike Dugan, who ran the ball in the end zone and scored the touchdown. Certainly, I would like to recognize our External Affairs Director, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, who worked tirelessly in her legislative role at the state capitol and advocated for this new forthcoming deed. Uh, driver services and CDL facility in Douglas County. Thank you, Tiffany, so much. In addition, I would like to thank Commissioner Moore of Georgia Driver Services and his engineer, Mr. Ritchie, for arranging a special meeting to share the news with me, at, which is a dream come true for Douglas County. Also, last but certainly not least, I would like to thank the Board of Commissioners for your extreme dedication and commitment for making Douglas County a premier place to live, work, and play. With no further ado, I have our County Administrator, Mark Teal, and you please proceed with the update for the Board of Commissioners regarding this uh, forthcoming driver services and CDL facility for Douglas County. Uh, yes, ma'am. So we have to be really careful. We can't go into, I can't go into a lot of detail without us going into executive session. Um, right. But we do have some parameters set forth from the state and so we're looking for the right piece of property um, that fits this project. Um, we've got a, we're, we're just looking at a lot of pieces of property. Um, and that's really all I can say as far as that goes. I'd be glad to talk to anyone offline or if y'all wanna go into executive session, we can go into executive session. Um, but we're in the early stages of this, so I don't have much more inf information, but I can, um, Really, that's all I'll say at this point. Um, but I'd be glad to talk to any of you offline if you want to go into further detail. I talked to the chairman and Commissioner Mitchell yesterday, so um, 
but we're looking and Chris Pumphrey's involved, James and myself and um, so we're in the process. So the okay. state would ultimately build this facility um, and then they would actually own the uh, building and the land um, once all this is complete. And it's DDS okay. and CDL. It's both. Okay. Derek, thank, thank you, you so much. Uh, Madam Chair. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Mm -hmm. Com okay. Commissioner Carpenter. You thank have the you. Floor. Director Till, would this bring jobs to the to the area? Would would um and would these jobs be staffed through the state or would they be staffed through us? They would be it's my understanding they would be state employees. State employees. I'm not sure how many I know the one, well, the one here in, one in Carrollton, I, they don't have maybe 10 to 15 employees. I mean, it's not a lot of employees that I'm aware of. Got you. But it would it would bring some jobs that local um, yes, residents could apply for, um, state yes, jobs, benefits, that type of thing. So that's, that's a win for us, as well as the convenience for the Douglas County residents and those who are near us. So that's also a double a double win. Uh, and um, can you tell us a little bit about maybe where in Douglas County are we looking, or how many acres we need? We're looking. How, we're looking countywide. Countywide. So there's no telling where it's gonna be. All right. I saw that smile. That smirk. Okay. So I'm not gonna get much out of you. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm just excited to hear this, you know, so kudos to everyone who actually uh, took this um, from the, the book that we had, you know, that Tiffany put together in our wish list and actually brought this to fruition. So kudos to the administration for this. And I, I'm excited to see this come about. Um, so, yes. All right. I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments uh, from the Board of Commissioners before we move on to our next topic? Okay. Thank you so much, Mark, and we look further uh, for further discussion later. But again, I uh, certainly wanted to just make a light announcement. Okay, Board of Commissioners, for obvious reasons, the coronavirus pandemic has changed the landscape of every county in the nation, and Douglas County is certainly not exempt. Next, uh, you will hear from our External Affairs Director, Tiffany Stewart Stanley, regarding CARES reimbursable coronavirus expenses, uh, reimbursable expenses. Uh, for Douglas County government, and she has done a quite a uh, great job on compare, comparing with other counties <clears throat> or benchmarking with other counties. She will highlight the criteria and, and requirements that will help uh, guide our discussion this morning uh, about allocations of the $1.6 million uh, that you know that's already been allocated as the first 30% of our funding. And then the remaining, uh, remainder, remaining 70% is uh, up to $5.5 million. Uh, funding is obvious. Uh, you know, we understand that uh, this CARES Act right now can only be ex uh, expensed on reimbursable expenses. And I wanted to have uh, give special thanks to our federal government for stepping in uh, and providing stimulus monetary support. Uh, from the congressional level uh, and also the federal level, I'm just, uh, we are just thrilled because we would all be in a different place if Congress had uh, not stepped up. Board of Commissioners, I am uh, certainly uh, asking for your, your input this morning once the presentation is made and your support in uh, coming up with great ideas and suggestions about what we need to do uh, and what we could utilize our funding for. Uh, with no further ado, I will uh, introduce our, uh, in, bring on our External Affairs Director, Tiffany Stewart Stanley. Tiffany, you have the floor. Good morning, Madam Chair, um, members of the Board of Commission and County Administrator Mark Till. Uh, I will, um, I was asked to give a brief overview of the CARES Act, as well as some examples of some funding programs by other counties. So I have prepared a, uh, PowerPoint presentation. So I'm going to hope that technology is on my side this morning. And let's see if I can pull it up. And it's not here. Hold on one second. OK, 
Okay, can you see the presentation? Hello? No, not yet. We're looking at your Microsoft team. Uh, okay, that. hold on one second. Let me go out. I apologize. I had it pulled up and... No, that's okay. Sometimes it's <laughs> hard to get those things to pull up down at the bottom. Yeah, let's see. One second. Okay, do you see it now? Yes. Okay, thank you. So like I just stated, I was um, tasked with giving a brief overview of the CARES Act and some examples of um, funding programs by other counties. So here's some background information on the CARES Act. Uh, Congress passed and President Trump signed the CARES Act on March 27, 2020. The CARES Act established a $150 billion coronavirus relief fund for state, county, and municipal governments with populations over 500,000 people for necessary expenses that are incurred due to COVID-19. So Douglas County, with our population being roughly 146,000 people, did not qualify for direct payments from the U.S. Treasury because we were under the 500,000 threshold. The U.S. Treasury oversees and administers the coronavirus relief fund payments to state and local governments. Those funds can be used to account for increased costs attributable to COVID-19, and payments may only be used to cover costs that were not accounted for in the most recent approved budget as of March 27, 2020. Expenses must be incurred between March 1st and December 30th, 2020. So, in July of 2020, the state of Georgia, through Georgia CARES, allocated funds to local municipality, municipalities to aid with COVID-19-related expenses based on population. So for all of those counties and cities that did not receive direct funding from the U.S. Treasury, the state of Georgia allocated 45% of the $4.1 billion that they received to these municipalities. And Douglas County was awarded a total amount of $5,538,018.81, with an initial award of $1,661,405.64 or 30%. So for the advance payments, which is the 30%, um, local governments receive the 30% of their allocation upon agreement to the terms and conditions. Following receipt of these funds, local governments will be required to upload supporting documentation to the Georgia CARES portal immediately after these funds have been spent. Funds can only be spent on eligible COVID-19 related expenses and local governments will have to return any funds that are not supported by documents to confirm that they are properly spent. So after the initial um, disbursement, um, counties can then submit reimbursement requests for the remaining 70%. So Douglas County, after the initial disbursement has $3,876,613.17 to receive these funds, Douglas County will have to submit a payment request along with supporting documentation. All funds will have to re be reimbursed, so any of these funds, the county will have to pay up front and then be reimbursed by the state. So here are some of the eligible expenses under the CARES Act. Personal protective equipment, enhanced testing, implementing social distancing, housing assistance, small business grants, and any public safety measures undertaken in response to COVID-19. These are just some of the um, expenses that can be um, used. Guidance from the U.S. Treasury also states that payroll expenses for public safety, public health, 
health care, human services, and similar employees whose services are substantially dedicated to mitigating or responding to the COVID-19 public health emergency are also covered under the CARES Act. And you'll see here, this is referring to hazard pay and overtime. Next, I have a list of ineligible expenses under the CARES Act. So any expenses that have been or will be reimbursed under any other federal program. So if you're getting reimbursed by FEMA, you cannot use funds for the CARES Act for that expense as well. Workforce bonuses other than hazard pay or overtime. You can't reimburse donors for donated items. Um, funds from CARES Act cannot be used for severance pay or any damages covered by insurance. And it also can't be used for any payroll or benefits for employees whose duties are not substantially dedicated to mitigating or responding to COVID-19 or any legal sell settlements. So I put together a few examples of County CARES Act funding um, from NACO. And you will see that a lot, a lot of these examples, the funding um, allocations were substantially larger than what we received in Douglas County, but these are counties are all large counties that actually received direct money from the U.S. Treasury because they were over the 500,000 population. So one example of money that was used by the CARES Act was for small business support. And so you'll see in Volusia County, Florida, um, they allocated up to $10 million in coronavirus relief funds to implement Relaunch Volusia, which is, which is a small business reopening grant program. And the program will make direct grants of up to $3,000 to qualifying small businesses with no more than 25 full-time employees. So that's just one example of a program put together by a county to support small businesses. The next example is from Tarrant County, Texas, and they also put together a small business support program, but their program also allocated 20% of the $30 million that they allocated for small business assistance would go directly to uh, minority women and veteran owned businesses. So they also you know, made sure to allocate that money out of the small business program to help those businesses. And then um, there, you can also do a nonprofit support in Jefferson County, Colorado. There was $5 million allocated towards um, helping small businesses and any nonprofits that were impacted by COVID-19. And then there's an example of housing assistance um, in Snohomish County in Washington. They provided $10 million in CARES Act funding to be used to help homeless people and any other vulnerable individuals um, in crisis. They provided rental assistance. Um, they established sanitation facilities and expanded resources to survivors of domestic violence and people with behavioral health issues. And then our neighbor, Cobb County, Georgia, allocated funds for um, essential personnel for hazard pay, um, and they um, allocated an additional $500 per month um, for those essential personnel. And then the last example is in Bexar County, Texas. They created a new job training program that will pay workers $400 or 50 weekly stipend to cover expenses for those to acquire new skills and help people who have lost their jobs um, rejoin the workforce. And so this was a $40 million um, workforce program that would provide training for job areas, um, but was not limited to healthcare, IT, and other tech jobs. So these were just a few examples of things that um, other counties were doing. So right now there is some pending federal legislation to hopefully provide more funding to state and local governments. Um, the first um, legislation that is out there is the House Heroes Act. This was introduced by the um, U.S. House of Representatives on May 12th of this year. And what this package would do is to provide $500 billion to assist state governments with fiscal impacts from the public health emergency caused by coronavirus. Now, of that, $187.5 billion would be allocated for county governments. And that aid would fl flow directly from the U.S. Treasury to each county, and this would be based on county population. So if this act were to pass, 
the money would come directly from the U.S. Treasury and we would not have to wait to get the money from the state. Um, this act also maintains the CARE Act deadline for the use of existing funds at December 30th, 2020, so it would not give an extension to use the funds. So in the Senate, in the U.S. Senate, um, they are currently uh, working on the Senate Hills Act. This act is a compilation of um, Senate Republican bills, and this would, would provide no new funding for state or local governments. However, it would expand allowable uses of the CARES Act um, coronavirus relief fund payments for lost revenue. So the money that we have now that we've received from the state of Georgia, if there are no new funds, that money, if this act is passed, would be allowed to be used for lost revenue. And that revenue would have to be incurred from March 1st, 2020 to 90 days after the last day of the 2021 fiscal year. Um, but it also extends the date of, for use of the CARES Act funds until 90 days after the end of the recipient's fiscal year. So it provides no new funding. However, it provides some flexibility with the funds that we already have. So one of the things that um, you know, should be taken into consideration in your discussions or your deliberations of what you want to do with the funds that we have now is the, um, is the fact that Congress is still negotiating, and we're hoping to hear an update by tomorrow on exactly if we'll be receiving any new funds or if we will receive the flexibility um, in order to spend the funds that we have. So that is the uh, end of my presentation. Um, and so I, that's all I have, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that the Board of Commissioners may have. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Tiffany Stewart Stanley. We appreciate your presentation. Board of Commissioners, do you have any questions for uh, Tiffany before we try to develop it? We'll start working on our list of things that we would like to see uh, potentially our funding to be expensed on, or perhaps if there is a revenue generating uh, uh, opportunity for us to offset some of our revenue losses. Uh, Board of Commissioners, uh, please feel free to chime in. This is your moment. No comment? Yes, ma'am. Oh, okay. I hit the wrong button. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you. This is Commissioner, Commissioner Guy. Yes, Commissioner Guy, you have the floor. Thank you, ma'am. Um, Tiffany, did you say the Hills Act? is pending. Yes, yes. Okay. Actually, both the HEROES and the HILLS Act is pending. There's just a lot of discussions going on right now in the Senate for the Senate to put together their package. Um, and so they're working, the, the House and the Senate are working together to try to come um, up with a compromise with both of the packages. But right now, they're in, the, in negotiations and from news reports um, and my discussions with other, uh, with NACO, we're expecting to hear a uh, to have an an update, hopefully, or a you know a package worked out by tomorrow. But it's not uh, guaranteed. And it's the Hills Act that would allow us to utilize the CARES funds for uh, reimbursement of loss of revenue. Yes, ma'am, that's correct. Okay, I just wanted to clarify that you were going kind of fast to it. But no, let's no. hope and pray that, that Congress gets together. Last I heard, they were a mile apart. <laughs> so yeah. let's hope they'll get together. Yes, let's hope. Okay. Board of Commissioners, this is certainly an opportunity for you to frame just some of your ideas and also your suggestions for um, us going forward, or should I say for Tiffany and um, her department going forward. And just would love to just, if you could give us some ideas today so as uh, that gives... Uh, the county administrator charge and Tiffany uh, a charge as we certainly began to expense the dollars. I see, um, I'm just fishing for input this morning, Board of Commissioners. You weigh in. Madam Chair? Yes, Vice Chairman Robinson. All right, so j just two quick points. I want to be consistent. Um, I think the small business grant um, initiative is something that should be considered. It's something that we've talked about in times past. Perhaps uh, um, we looked at a model that the Chamber and Development Authority were considering. I probably mm -hmm. got a spin on that, but I'd like to put that at least on my tab for consideration. 
And to go along with that, I, I still think that education and entrepreneurship is important. Um, it, it's great to give people money, but it's also great to give them a foundation of understanding so they can be more effective. Same thing you would do with workforce development regarding um, skills. So those would be my two initial off the cuff. Okay, thank you. And um, Clerk, do we have Lisa Watson on the line? I just want to make sure she's uh, taking notes or either we have uh, the legislative aides. I know you're probably taking notes as well, but I want to make sure this information, we can compile this information and get it back to our external affairs director. Um, yes, ma'am, I'm here. Okay, thank you, Lisa. If you could just compile it so we can just at least get it in a centralized location and that'll be back to the, we will return this information to the county administrator and our external affairs director so they have their marching orders. Commissioner Carthen, do you have any suggestions? I certainly want everybody to weigh in. I do. Uh, um, I was thinking this morning that we were going to hear some of what the county administrator um, was looking at as far as uh, kind of a guideline for us so then we could give input. Um, I would be probably, now that I see what we're doing, I would probably be more prone to just go back to look at the resolution that I put forth when we did the Emergency um, uh, Cares Act. I think we did it in, what was it, May? May or so? Maybe That's using right. that as a framework. I think uh, um, I think we did pretty good with it. We, we did allocate some of what uh, Director um, Tiffany Stewart Stanley showed us in regards to transitional housing, um, helping with um, those particular um, needs for the um, the homeless, and I think we did something in regards to um, helping families who um, who were uh, experiencing abuse. I believe you also mm -hmm. gave money in the air. So kind of using that framework, I think would would um, would bode well. But I'm also in the mindset of if we are able to use it to offset some of our revenue loss, we may want to see, I mean, we can do a framework, but then also keep that in the back as well, because we know our revenue loss um, are substantial because of COVID. So, uh, and then the other thing that I did find out in doing a little research was that we may get all of that. It is, again, up to the ones, it, it is up to the state when we present to them what we have spent, that they, you know, say yay or nay if it was a actual COVID-19 related expense. So um, we want to be very careful and very direct in how we utilize those funds so that we will definitely get back what we spend. We don't have a penny to to not get back or, or to put somewhere else. Um, so, um, so if you will give me to the end of the day, I will definitely get something over to uh, the county administrator and um, to um, director um, Stuart Stanley uh, on my thoughts. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Carthen. Also, just uh, I'm getting ready to call on Commissioner uh, Mitchell, and I was going to ask you, uh, Mark, if you could pull up the list of uh, items that we're submitting for the 1.6 that's already in, in progress so the Board of Commissioners can see what's already been sent. Do you have that uh, Excel spreadsheet, Mark, by any chance that you can pull up and allow them to take a look? Peek yes, ma'am, we have. Oh, okay, so I'm going to give you a little time, but I'm going I'm to pivot to our Commissioner Mitchell and allow him to speak uh, on behalf of District 1. Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, let's see here. So I, I think as Commissioner Carthen stated, I, I kind of was anticipating something a little bit different presented versus what I'm kind of seeing, but uh, I think we need to take a, a look at which direction we're gonna go and where we're gonna spend those funds and assure that we, that the monies that we've lost to include even those that are being spent through our um, uh, money that we spent doing with the with the testing and all that good stuff. So, but I just want to make sure that definitely whatever money we spent that we we be reimbursed from the county's perspective and those that were helping surrounding us from that uh, testing side of things that we kind of make sure we 
definitely use the funds and use up the funds. So, but I'll wait to see what kind of what Mark got and make sure we kind of see all that we may have actually uh, encountered. And then we'll just kind of see what direction we go from that point. But right now, I'm just kind of glad that we've got possibly the funds and we just make sure that when we spend them, that we spend them to be reimbursed for what we've actually encountered at that expense during this whole COVID-19. So I'll leave it there for right now, though. So I yield back, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, Mark, are you ready? And and uh, I won't allow you. I will, yes, I, Commissioner I'm sorry, Mitchell. I had my hand sorry, up. <laughs> yes, Commissioner, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, I'm sorry, Commissioner Guider. You didn't know the reason why I didn't say anything because you had spoken. But yes, please go again, Commissioner. Uh, well, you, you, you asked a question, so I wanted I wanted to uh, input my uh, yes, opinion. Yes, ma'am. Um, and I apologize. But anyway, um, I would be in favor of um, the lost revenue, applying the lost revenue. I don't, the thing about it, there's so many unknown factors right now. Uh, Congress is so far apart from three trillion to uh, one trillion. Uh, you know, uh, the Democrats want three trillion uh, dispersed and the Republicans want the uh, one trillion. So, uh, and we don't know, that, I don't even know if that has the small business grants in there because uh, the first one did. So we need to find out that um, is part of the, of the package. Do both of the plans include a small business grant because we don't wanna spend those, our, these funds if we don't have to, if the federal government's going to give it in the next package, does that make sense? Um, but the lost revenue, I cer we certainly <laughs> could use uh, a couple of million there because of, uh, of what, what we're looking at uh, with the digest and then the millage rate. But uh, I don't, I wonder, uh, Tiffany, do you have any idea when they will act on the hills? Act. Yes, um, Commissioner Goddard. So I wanted to ask your first question. I do know that the Hills Act does um, continue the Small Business Recovery and pay Paycheck Protection Program. So there is some money in there for loan forgiveness for small business loans, and then also um, some some more money to actually give loans to small business. Businesses. So there is some funds in there for that. Um, from what I'm hearing, and there is a call today that I have um, scheduled um, with um, some members of NACO, where we're, we're going to have a discussion and with their uh, their legislative an analyst today at four o'clock. Um, there is supposed to be an expected, hopefully, agreement by tomorrow. But like I said, those talks could break down, of course, at any moment. So we're, we're hoping for tomorrow. Um, that there would be an agreement. Okay, so we might know um, as far as the Hills Act, where they're going, to, whether or not they're going to proceed with that or whatever, or extend the use of the CARES funds. Uh, if we knew exactly where we are there, another thing is uh, I've gotten a lot of emails and uh, about concerning evictions. I talked with the magistrate judge yesterday, and she says uh, the CARES Act covers um, evictions uh, or puts uh, stipulations on evictions as far as any property that has a government-backed loan. So, and that only goes through the end of this month. Uh, I have heard the president say something about extending that so uh, to cover people that might be thrown out of their houses, but that does not include uh, private financial uh, or finance uh, apartments and places like that. It's only if they have a government back loan that they, they have the restrictions. So, uh, and it, she said it's very, very complicated. So if any, Body is being threatened right now. They need to contact her, the magistrate office, and they may can guide them uh, in that in that way. But um, I just wish we had more information at this point. <laughs> uh, we don't want to spend all the money if we can later uh, in two or three weeks we're 
we're told that we can use it to make up for lost revenue because we all agree we've lost a lot of revenue, especially sales tax. So um, it's kind of hard to make a decision <laughs> with all these ifs, ands, and buts still on the table. But uh, I, I certainly wish we would uh, reserve some of that money um, in case the Hills Act does pass to apply to our lost revenue. And with that, I'll yield back. Thank you so much, Commissioner Guider. Certainly we are gonna reserve uh, the, the, the uh, remain, remainder of the money. Just if you just recall, we said we're submitting 30% now. We still have 70% that's still pending and we will not move until we hear something from the Heels Act. So just wanted to make that very clear to you. But the first 30% is due now. And I believe Mark Mark will review that with you in just a second, just so you can see exactly what's being submitted as part of the 1.6 million. And then after Mark, um, I would love for Lisa Crossman to chime in regarding the testing and all the things, the money that we've spent on testing and uh, the medical uh, components with our uh, citizens. Mark Teal, if you could just- Mr. Chair, just, just one second before we go to Mark, just one second. Yes, Commissioner Mitchell. Okay, and, 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 and this, this is a question for Tiffany. You, you may or may not have the answer to this, Tiffany, but um, does this apply to those homeowners who may have uh, provided themselves with their, their home uh, COVID testing type kits and things of that caliber? Uh, are we able to direct funds in that direction? Um, yeah, Commissioner Mitchell, that is a good question, and I do not have the answer to that, but I will look into it and get an answer back to the board. Got it, okay. I mean, I'm only asking because I've received a couple of emails and, and, and asked of those types of questions. And, and again, I, I was kind of expecting a different type of a presentation today, though, but I guess I need to kind of throw that out there to make sure if there is some way to relieve those citizens uh, that may have experienced this COVID-19 by, you know, from an expense perspective of buying their kits, providing their own type of makeup, uh, are those reimbursable expenses that could come out of these funds? Or if not, then we'll deal with it. But if there if they are, or if there is some additional funds that could be taken out for them, uh, for our citizens, I think we need to kind of look at that. As I stated about, you know, with uh, Dr. Crossman and others who may can also add to that uh, expense that we've spent dealing with this whole COVID-19. So, and I guess, Ms. Crossman, I guess you'll kind of go through all that stuff now. So outside of that, I'll, I'll yield and we'll get further directions and information from Mark and everybody else. Thank you. Madam Chair? Yes, okay. Um, thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Uh, Vice Chairman Robinson. Yeah, real quick, since we're giving Tiffany homework. Tiffany, I'd love to find out, um, we talk about small business. Um, um, I'd like to know what percentage of the CARES Act funding came to Georgia and specifically Douglas County, right? It, it, it's, it's great to say that they had that money available, but when I hear the Lakers got money and all, I mean, if, if you think about how it went down, did it really get down to the small businesses and did it get down to Douglas County? I know that information is available. You just got to know where to go get it, but I'd like to know what percentage of that small business money came to Georgia and within Georgia, how many people, um, uh, businesses within Douglas County uh, were awarded um, that, that funding? I'd like to know that number. I, I okay. want to prove or disprove something, but you, you see what I'm going for? Just, yes, sir. I, just, all right. But that would help drive my decision on um, mm -hmm. small businesses. I mean, it's all taxpayer dollars. Um, it's just a matter of how we want to appropriate it this way or that way. Um, but I need some facts first. So again, I yield. Thank you, Madam Chair. We're good. Okay. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner Robinson. Okay, Mark, are you ready to present what we've already, the first uh, tier of money would be spent on? Yes, ma'am. Hold I mean, up. I'll be pulling up expensive. the uh, spreadsheet. Okay. These are as of the end of June. We just received the, the rest of the uh, July numbers yesterday. Um, so Can you blow it up a little bit, Mark? Can you expand it for the Board of Commissioners and myself? I can't see. Well, not, not. Hold on, I'm working on it. Okay, I'm just saying maybe I, there you go. 
little too big. You can't see the okay. numbers. Hold on. You can shrink it. I'm sorry. You can just shrink it and read it to us. There you go. Okay, so the the uh, so the first of all, we'll go over what was in the resolution. So th these numbers are hazard pay for the general fund. Um, so some donations to some 501c3s, um, senior services, we transferred 10,000. Now these are to the end of June. We haven't um, added July numbers yet because we just received those yesterday. And then the, the other departments, I mean the other funds we have um, where hazard pay went. So the total so far um, out of the resolution was, Nine hundred and forty-eight thousand. I'm not sure if that number is correct because I think the resolution was only nine hundred thousand total. So we'll have to check on that. But so and then as far as department-related expenses, so general fund um, two hundred forty-six thousand, and these are anything from hand sanitizer to um, laptops for telecommuting for. Um, the geo miss we've done for some apartments, it includes uh, overtime, say, for example, well, no, these don't, but we've got some coming. So fire department, um, they had some people out on quarantine. Well, they had to fill those positions with another employee who got overtime. So that overtime would be uh, included on the, the next spreadsheet. As, as well as any sick time um, that employees had. So if employees were out, you know, two weeks, which is 10 days, um, so that those benefits and salaries can be applied to the CARES Act as well. Um, so total at the end of June was 1.26 million. So that's where we were at the end of June. And it, We'll get uh, July's numbers updated in the next couple of days. I do know that the courts have some stuff coming, so there's a lot of stuff that's been approved that may not even hit July's list because that we haven't actually paid the invoices yet. So the uh, the laptops that uh, Tammy Howard purchased, I know Judge Emerson is looking at. So the state has sent them um, protocols for courts moving forward. So they're going to have to do a lot of teleconferencing. Um, so there's a lot of, so not software, but some computers that, you know, laptops and things of that nature, some video cameras that they're going to have to purchase. So that will be uh, coming as well in the near future. Okay. Thank you, Mark. And Mark also, and I'm not sure if Lisa has the list that she submitted uh, to um, to us uh, so we could have that information available regarding all the testing supplies uh, that's been submitted as well. So. Yes, we have that list. Okay. Can you provide that list for the Board of Commissioners as well so they can look at it and see what type of things have been expensed? Uh, Lisa, do you have that readily available? Uh, let me check, Mark, uh, to see if I can share my screen with you on that. And just to let the board know, we have to be, uh, we've had discussions with finance. We have to be very careful on large payouts because um, we're really tied on cash until the end of the year. So any large payouts um, you know, we may not have the cash on hand to make that payment, um, and actually to front that payment. Can you see that now? Mm hmm. Sorry. Well, no. so uh, just let me do a quick summary. Um, so you know that Cobb and Douglas Public Health has been on the front lines during, since March for this pandemic, particularly related to testing, uh, case investigation, outbreak investigation, and contact tracing. 
Um, we have maximized our requests from a number of other sources, including GEMA and FEMA and our state public health offices. And so in those cases, for example, we have gotten other funding to provide our test kits and our test laboratory expenses, some of our PPE. Um, we also have gotten through our GEMA and FEMA connections, some of our equipment. National Guard support, some of our temporary nursing support, but the rest of it has all fallen on our agency funds. And so that's what we're coming to ask you all for support for. Um, our request is for $903,000 uh, to be able to carry us through the end of December. Some of that money is for supplies that we cannot get through our other funding sources. Um, so some of it of, of some of our PPE, but I will tell you that the majority of the funds that we need are to help us to prepare for vaccination, uh, antibody testing that will be coming down the pike. If you'll remember early on in the pandemic uh, in Douglas County, we had some significant delays in being able to get um, testing supplies, PPE, um, and because it was just such in high demand and it put us really behind in being able to respond for the residents in the testing that we felt like we needed to do. And so what one of the things we're proposing is to be able to uh, get some of these supplies in now while they're available um, and be able to be prepared for when vaccination becomes uh, an option for us. So that's one piece of our request. The second is that there is some equipment that we need like hand washing stations and tents uh, that are not available to us again through our other funding sources so that we can use these at our outreach uh, testing events. We have been renting this equipment to date uh, because I don't think any of us expected that we'd still be here in this situation back when this started in March. And so originally we had uh, a number of the uh, pieces of equipment that we were renting. What we have found is that it's just not very cost effective to continue to do that. So we'd like to purchase um, a couple of pieces of equipment just to have on hand to continue us through the pandemic. And then this is also equipment that we could use in other public health outreach events after the pandemic ends. And then lastly, the majority of our request is related to staff. If you'll remember uh, what we've done to date is to redirect a number of our traditional public health staff to respond to the pandemic. So many of our nurses are out at our testing sites, our epidemiologists who respond to about 70 other uh, reportable infectious diseases are fully committed to the COVID response. We, as we continue through this pandemic, we have got to return them to their traditional public health um, functions. Um, you, we still have all of the issues that we always responded to, uh, like outbreaks in some of our nursing homes that were not related to COVID. Um, we have TB response and uh, STD diagnosis and treatment that still needs to be addressed. And so we need to return our nurses to those functions and we need to return our epidemiologists to um, following up on other infectious diseases. So the majority of our request to you is to help us in a few areas. One of them is to be able to hire hourly temporary staff to um, assist with the COVID response as we continue through it. The other is to help us with some contracts uh, with Metro Atlanta Ambulance and our community organizing relief effort, uh, that core testing contract, and I'll talk about that in just a second, to be able to expand our testing in Douglas County. We also, as Mark mentioned earlier, have a lot of our public health staff who have been working uh, 70, 75 hours a week uh, since March, um, and we would like to be able to pay some of this overtime. 
And then lastly, on the miscellaneous expenses, we do, as we expand our testing opportunities and add these temporary staff, we've got to be able to support them with computer needs. Um, we need to be able to pay some lease expenses when we uh, are um, offering some of these additional testing. And so that's the, the rest of our expense is um, for to be able to do that. So we're asking you all for just over $900,000 to be able to carry us through the end of December as we continue to be on the front lines of responding to this pandemic. Um, I hope that, um, let me see if I will stop sharing. Um, my hope is that um, you all will help us as we continue to expand our response in Douglas County. So for example, uh, beginning tomorrow night, we're going to be adding uh, two more days of testing. So at the Douglasville Town Center location on Stewart Parkway, every Wednesday and Friday evening, we will be from 1 to 7 p.m. We will be offering COVID testing at no charge for residents. Um, and so that will continue at least through the end of August while we see how demand goes. Uh, we're continuing the six days a week at our Douglasville Public Health Center. And then we are doing a number of pop-up locations through, um, throughout the uh, month at locations like this weekend. We're offering from 7 to 1 at the Douglasville Courthouse. We'll be offering COVID testing. On the 22nd, we're offering testing with the pantry in concert with their food distribution effort. And so in order to do all of those expanded testing, we need to be able to have these funds to pay staff, uh, to pay contractors. Um, and then we also need the back end of that, right, which is all the epidemiologists and the contact tracers to be able to um, help us with the follow up for any positive cases. We're continuing to work, uh, as many of you know on the call, we're continuing to work with local schools and churches and businesses and county and city government to be able to help with their reopening plans. Again, a lot of our staff have been diverted to be able to help with that. Um, and that has just continued over the months and we, continue, we expect it to continue through December. Um, and so we need to be able to have support to be able to continue to provide that service to uh, business owners and folks in the community. So I'll stop there, uh, Chairwoman, and see if you have any other questions or if you want me to address any other asks. I think you're muted. Okay, yeah, thank, thank you so much, Lisa, uh, for your presentation. Certainly, Board of Commissioners, uh, tonight, uh, today, I know you were expecting a different type of presentation, but we have some other items, such as this public health component that's going to compress the money that we do have. $5.5 million sounds like a lot, but it's really not a lot uh, in the scheme of things. Certainly, I uh, wanted Lisa to be here today so we, she could share that piece as well. Uh, certainly, I uh, heard you loud and clear, Commissioner Robinson, about the small business uh, support and then also the educational entrepreneurship and also Commissioner Carthen heard you loud and clear that we just seem like we're already on the uh, pathway based on some of the things that you presented in your resolution. Uh, Commissioner Mitchell and Commissioner Guider, I, I particularly I, Commissioner Guider, I know you mentioned revenue losses and that will probably be an opportunity, but based on the uh, Senate Deals Act, we may not have a whole lot to offset revenue once we deal with this public health component. And then Commissioner Mitchell, I heard you loud and clear as well on some of the issues. And you did mention that public health component was uh, essential and we needed to address that regarding testing and all the things uh, regarding antibodies, uh, testing and um, tracing to take care of our citizens. Board of Commissioners at this time, do you have any comments or anything regarding uh, for Lisa? Madam Chair. Any questions? Yes, um, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, thank you. No, I, I appreciate it. You know, back in March and here we are in August. I remember what plan A was, um, you know, let's, you know, shelter in place, see what happens. And then we moved into plan B, mm -hmm. doing testing and trying to get that around. Now I'm hearing vaccinating. So we're, we're, we're moving along, right? We're, 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 we're moving along. Um, however, I didn't see this one coming. So the state gives me money and I've got to give it back to a state agency. 
I hear you. I get it. I know you're part of the Douglas Cobb Public Health. It's just, I didn't see this coming. Great pitch, though. That's how you pitch. But um, <laughs> 900,000. But, um, I'm, you know, I'm, all right. So I thought money came down for our first testing site on Selman. Maybe it went to the city. Um, but then it moved over to, um, uh, I guess, public health. Um, um, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to follow the money. I, I'm, so I'm wondering, sure. hold on, let me, let me just, I just want to get my comments out, please. Um, um, because this is in me, right? So, um, and then I, I, when I think about, uh, we always have a challenge between Cobb and Douglas and are we getting our fair share, right? And I'm, I'm just, I'm gonna have to pause on this one. Um, you know, the, the ask is duly noted. I need to step back for a minute. And I, I think back to my peers, Commissioner Carthy and Commissioner Mitchell's point, we need to realign this pitch. Y'all we, we, got to back up and bring a more uh, um, aligned. Okay, so because it's, it's moving, you're asking us for feedback. We're sort of talking about this. We've got this hard pitch. It's like, and the hard pitch is overwhelming everything else. And it's like, okay, guys, back up. Give us a complete, succinct pitch so we can we can really make a decision. Um, and again, I'm, um, you know, um, I'm not pushing hard. I, again, it, it's more of a this is just my gut. Um, I, I don't, I'm not looking, not looking for a defense of my my comments yet. It, it's just something. Again, it's our first time hearing it. I'm not thinking that we're going to make a decision today, um, or I'm not ready to make a a, a concurrence yet. Um, I, I think we still have some holes um here we need to move fast i, I do get it um but i, I couldn't do it with this because again we it, it's our expectations were somewhat um unaligned and, and not that we knew anything we just were looking for perhaps something different um but um yeah i mean i'm i'm um you know you're asking us to allocate money um uh, with no framework or we sort of had a framework and then we get this hard pitch from the right 900 grand which sort of messes up the percentages in my mind of, of what we were doing and, and also sort of if we had in our mind the original framework from the resolution we had a lot of pp and a lot of needs in that but this see i, I have y'all it, it, it's not a line so you almost got the administration then you got public health all right they, all right so if y'all going to say it's all related then they need to be succinctly put in there she needs to be a line item just like csb and anything else so that we can see a complete picture so that's just that's just feedback. I, I'm not really looking for a response. Um, I yield the floor. I'm good, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. All right, uh, Commissioner. Any other comment from the Board of Commissioners? Just certainly this again today is just a brainstorming session. Um, uh, the public health component, um, Lisa certainly brought that information to our attention probably about a week ago. So I wanted to make sure we layer. Uh, it end with the discussion because I didn't want any surprises to the Board of Commissioners uh, regarding this public health component. Um, certainly five point, again, like I said, $5.5 .5 million is not a whole lot of money in the scheme of things based on other counties who've received $183 million versus our point, I mean, our 5.5. .5. So, uh, Tiffany, I, I, if you could, I believe the Board of Commissioners just want to hear exactly all the things that you did. You provided some examples and it's really not a really large uh, framework of how, how this money could be spent. If you could just certainly just go over those things, just give them a list again of the, all the things that they, this money could uh, definitely be spent on in terms of expenses. And I know we are we know about the public health component and all the PPEs, but I know you mentioned small businesses. Can you just uh, rehash that one more time for us? Sure, sure, Chairman Jones. So um, some of the eligible expenses, and my list was not all comprehensive. It was just some of the most popular things being used. So there are some ways to get creative and use this for some of the other things the commissioners may be thinking about. Um, but the list that I provided was personal protective equipment, enhanced testing, implementing social distancing, housing assistance, small business grants, and then public safety measures undertaken in response to COVID-19, as well as hazard pay and overtime for those personnel whose um, job duties deal with substantially mitigating or responding to COVID-19. Um, so that's that's the list that I provided. Um, it's a very general list, but of course, 
Um, I, I know you said today was just a brainstorming session. So once we get the final information from Congress, um, you know, we can give a more detailed look at the actual funds that we will have allocated and um, look at making some allocations for the board to consider. Okay. Any other comment from the board? Anything Chairman else Jones. to add? Or? Uh -huh. Thank Jones. you so much. Commissioner. Yes, Commissioner Carthen. Thank you. Uh, this is for uh, Lisa Crossman from Cobb Douglas Public Health. Are the are the expenses high? Are the expenses that you are, are anticipating in regards to the vaccine? Uh, is that divvied between the counties? Like, are you anticipating already what it would cost for us to get the vaccine up, dispensed and, you know, to the citizens? Or how, how are you all allocating that? That's what I'm trying to get So to. what we did, we look at just the population. And so our ask to Cobb County was just related to the population of Cobb County. The ask to Douglas County is to be prepared to be able to vaccinate about 25% of the population to start, right? Um, remember what I said is the goal of this funding was for us to be able to get some of the supplies in hand so that when the vaccination was made available, we'd be ready to go and, and, and get out of the gate immediately instead of how we were at the beginning where the testing was, which was, mm -hmm. can we get tests? Can we get PPE? Can we get test kits? Can we get processing? We don't wanna be in that position again. We anticipate that um, any vaccination uh, and testing that we'll be able to have through our state funding, um, the vaccination offer, right? To be able to actually do the vaccine, have the vaccine paid for, what we're asking Douglas County is to be able to help us with the supplies to administer that vaccine um, and to only have it be so that we can get started immediately. So we budgeted, the ask to you is um, for 25% of the population, knowing that it'll be more likely than that, um, but this will get us started until those federal sources come in. Got you, okay. That's what I needed to know. Thank you so much. I yield, Madam Chair. Okay, thank you so much, yes, Commissioner May I ask uh, Commissioner Ms. Crossman? Yes, Commissioner Guider. I heard you. Uh, so you're anticipating a vaccine this year? Is that what you're saying? Well, Commissioner, uh, not necessarily. You know, uh, I wa we're watching some of the same information that you probably are about the development of a vaccine. What my our ask to you is is to help us get the supplies to be ready for whenever it comes out um, and so if it comes out this year great we will have those supplies if it doesn't come out until the first part of 2021 uh, which is also possible we'd still have the supplies to be ready to go these aren't going to be expiring anytime soon and we'll be able to put them to use when that's available Okay, so uh, are you not going to utilize um, uh, pharmacies and uh, some of these immediate care units and maybe family doctors to give vaccines if it does come out? Well, again, Commissioner, I um, I don't have I don't have a crystal ball to see how that will be planned federally. Um, certainly, we currently work with all of those folks that you just listed on traditional vaccinations, and we're very supportive of that. Um, what we're anticipating, though, is that even if those partners are able to provide vaccinations, just like they do testing now, there will still be a demand on public health to do mass vaccination events, just like we're doing mass testing events right now, so that we can reach the majority of the population um, and particularly all those folks who might be uninsured. Uh, one of the uh, few of the newscasts that I've seen uh, are saying that they will be utilizing um, these places to get the vaccine out, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> as soon as possible uh, because they're you. already, uh, you know, I think they may be uh, working on the production of them right now. So, right. Um, uh, the vaccines are still in a testing phase right now. Um, and so 
you know, I hope that all of that is made available through those private providers like the CVS pharmacies and a doctor's office and the hospitals. Um, all of those places are working with us now to be able to do testing. And my hope is that they will also be allowed to do vaccinations when the vaccine becomes available. I do, uh, as I said, I do still think that there will be a priority on public health and a, a expectation on public, public health to do mass vaccination events to be able to get a large portion of the population vaccinated quickly in a drive-through setting. Um, we need to read the Bible about the wall of Jericho and how it was rebuilt. <laughs> Everybody chipped in. So anyway, um, uh, to Mark, I'd like to ask Mark uh, real quickly. Um, you said we can't afford any large payouts. When do we expect to get the uh, the reimbursement for the, is it 1.2 million or? or no, 1. the first one's 1.6. We have received Six. that. You what? Yeah. And I, so we have received the 1.6, which is the 30%. We still have to submit documentation backing that up. Um, and yeah. as far as the large payouts, I said we just have to be careful you know, because we have the 1.6 so far, we've only spent right around 1.3, 1.35 after we get July's numbers. Um, I just said we need to be really careful. We have to check with finance before any large payments are made because it's the end of the year and taxes hadn't come in yet. So our, we just have to check our cash flow. Okay, Mark, but just you, you borrowed the seven, the uh, 25 million dollars uh, on the tans. So that's not available. Uh, I'm just asking. Yes, but we've used most of that up. Oh, you've already used it up? Yes. Yeah, okay. I don't have the specific numbers. We can get you those numbers, but I don't have specific numbers. Okay, and one other question. Uh, the first payout was uh, 400 some odd, uh, thousand dollars was to the service um, the Community Service Bureau, is that a state agency? Or is that uh, just uh, a county? And it's, I don't know. It's quasi-governmental. Uh, Pardon? It's, it's quasi-governmental, Commissioner. Mm -hmm. So it's, so it, it's affiliated with the county. And, and county. So, yeah. yeah, state and county, yes. Okay, because that, they're that's similar sort of to jumping. public health. Pardon? They're similar to public health where there is a state oversight as well as a local board oversight, just like public health has some state uh, um, support, but we are also a county uh, agency yeah. as well and have a county board of directors. Well, Commissioner mm -hmm. um, Robinson was talking about he had a problem with the uh, us funding a state agency. We get the money from the state and then have to give it back. And I think we've already done that. And I, I, it never dawned on me that they were a state agency. But uh, when you raised, when he raised the question, I just wondered if, um, did we consider that at the time too, that they were a state agency? Because we gave them $410,000 right off the bat. So. Well, with that, I'll yield back. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner. Uh, okay, Commissioner Mitchell. Yes, just just one quick question there for uh, Ms. Crossman. So, so quick question. I know you guys work to cover the region, correct? And we're part of your region, am I correct? Yes, there's two okay. counties where Cobb and Douglas is in our district. And I noticed you mentioned correct me if I'm like 25% of what we're looking at for trying to kind of give you 25% of these funds, blah, 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 blah. I'm assuming the other 75% is being requested from Cobb or how is that, help me to understand, I know it's only 25% of the population or 25% of the, the, the request or? Oh, I'm sorry, Commissioner, that okay. I may have been confusing on that. So we submitted a separate uh, request to Cobb County um, and that has been fulfilled to be able to cover the Cobb residents. 
with um, all the same kinds of ask that we've made of Douglas County. And so we're tracking that of all of the services and the supplies um, and the events that we're providing to Cobb County is coming out of those funds. And then these would only be for the Douglas County funds. Um, so this is a this is money. This 900,000 would carry just what we're doing in Douglas County, not regionally, just in Douglas County between uh, now and the end of the year. The reference that I made about 25% was simply the supplies that we'd asked for for the purpose of vaccination. Excuse me was we just took a number of 25% of the population and said, let's get prepared to be able to at least start vaccination efforts mm -hmm. in Douglas County when that becomes available. So that but means, some, okay. I'm sorry, so that that's means, okay. I apologize for interrupting you, but so that means that this 25% that we're using as a vague number would, would focus strictly on Douglas Countyans and an office and or location and or whatever that is will be all Douglas County. And, and the reason I'm asking this, and, and I, I think my, my board members are probably un, understand and probably agree with me with the whole, I, I get the region, I get Cobb and we all trying to work together and we need to come together and co hopefully make this all come together and work. But let's say when we started this whole COVID-19, we had to come to Cobb to even get tested. We had to come to Cobb to, to do a lot of things. And we kind of felt like why we don't have a place in Douglas County for Douglas Countyans. What I'm trying to avoid is if we decide to go in this direction, which I, I, I can't speak for the entire board, how do you reassure us that we would get this cost spent to those that are in Douglas County that we will, you know, if the vaccine is here and we, we need an office here and we're going to be plugging them here and it'll work here, not that we're trying to share in the funds, which we are, it won't get that we got to come to Cobb just to kind of get this done. So Commissioner, I mean, really good question. Um, I can assure you that the ask that we're making for the staff and the contractors um, and the supplies are fully dedicated to Douglas County residents. Uh, we have a separate ask that is um, has been fulfilled in Cobb County to be able to serve Cobb County residents and we're keeping those funds separately. Um, we also have some state money that has come down for what I mentioned, the testing kits, the lab processing, um, that's handled through our state folks. Um, and so that's covered for both counties with those test kits and lab processing. But all of the staff that are on the list that I shared with you um, all of that is fully dedicated to Douglas County. We currently are doing six days a week at the Douglas Public Health Center for testing. Uh, and I mentioned that we started out just because we felt like we needed to do it out of our own agency funds to be able to offer this new core testing um, at the Douglasville Town Center location, at the Douglas Courthouse this weekend, um, at the pantry. We've been doing a number of pop-up testing, um, mm -hmm. but it's just hard to continue that indefinitely without this funding. Got it. And, and you understand the, the, why the Q&A is about that only because I just want to reassure the Douglas Countyans will get the use of those funds and the use of those kits and the use of what we're allocating. Uh, not that we've got to go to Cobb, not that we won't go to Cobb, uh, but it, when we kicked this off, it was about getting to Cobb until we finally got to Douglas County in, in Douglas County. Not that Just, we, you, you know, so, okay. Yes, sir. I, so certainly uh, the question is really appropriate and, and no problem with the question. Okay. And you have my reassurance that the, this ask, that the resources that we're asking for that the resulting work from this funding will stay in Douglas County to the benefit of Douglas residents. Sounds good. I yield back. Thank you. M Madam Chair. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much, Commissioner Mitchell. Um, Commissioner Robinson. Yeah, no, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I, I've got to re respond, but, but more toward the citizens regarding my comments regarding public health. I, I didn't support 
CSB initially. Both are state agencies and both I don't believe in the business model that's created. I don't think that Douglas County has ever gotten their fair share. The only reason I got comfortable with CSB because we did an audit of them. We went in there and reconciled the numbers, right? They had a board, public health has a board, right? So we had, we took our time. We got into that. We recognized that we really weren't getting our fair share. We had to undo this contract and why are we funding this? So no, you just don't take things at, at, at point blank. Right. And so my point was like, okay, here, here, here it goes again, but it's okay. But like all questions are allowable and you can take your position on like, uh, okay. I just didn't see this one coming. We've got comfortable with CSB to the point like, okay, I get it. And really I got comfortable because it's for the benefit of the citizens. You know, we got tired of going over to Cobb and they're using our resources to put housing and stuff over here, but yet we got to go over there for services. It was, it was a lot of, um, it, it was a, a business model that evolved over time. It's just a, just what it was, and it, it needed to be upgraded. So um, I, I don't want my comments to be sort of shaded um, in a way that, you no, know, it went deeper than that. Where's the money? How's it go? Um, to your point, I appreciate the comment about assurances, but, okay, I still need to see uh, the underlying facts behind it, right? So whenever somebody pitches, it's like it, it sounds good, um, but I'm, I'm coming from my perspective that, you know, in God, I trust all others to bring data, right? Since you made the reference of, of, of the Bible. Um, that, that being said, I, I think we're good. Again, um, this is quick and fast, just like with, with anything. And um, it's not could I do it, but should I do it? And would I vote for it? Um, and, and so... And I'm just because I do this doesn't mean I'm going to do that and not because I'm not going to do that. So let's be careful. Um, you know, let, let, let me make my own decision for District 2 and, um, and, and leave it at that. But if you're trying to get me to buy in, that wasn't a good way to do that um, uh, accordingly. Um, that being said, um, um, Lisa, so real quick, and I'm going to leave you with this. I appreciate the ramping up for the vaccinations, but let, let's talk about this testing. This is something that me and Commissioner Carthen have, have come across probably independently which is there's a difficulty of going online, getting registered uh, for testing, right? It sounds great. Like we got all this testing, we're doing all these things. But when people go out there, uh, it, it's just, it, it just seems like um, the website doesn't really work the way you would think that it, it should work. Uh, this is not um, just me talking. These are citizens that are giving their, their, their experience. Um, um, have we improved it? Um, 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 it, it's so far out and I get to drive up, I get the quick, the, the, the quick stick and move, um, no pun intended, but can you give us some insight into that? Because again, it's about the quality of the deliverable, right? It, it's, it's about what was our execution, right? So I, I get the ask, but okay, but what, what have we done so far? How, if we had to evaluate ourselves, it's like, yeah, if I'm going to invest in something, well, what was my yield initially before I re-up again? So I'm trying to get a feel for our experience. And I know we're running fast. I get it. We're building as we go. Don't get me wrong. But, but you know, like as you gave Commissioner uh, Mitchell some assurances, tell me about the current um, testing and some of the issues that have come out of the website and registration. Can you give us a little insight on that, please? Of course. So good question, Commissioner. I would say that... Um, in you know we were moving quickly and we were linking with our state website to be able so that someone could go online and register anywhere in the state right and so that we originally had our own testing uh, registration site on our website and then we were asked to link into the state website so that any resident anywhere in georgia could search within a 5 10 25 mile radius to be able to get tested when we started that in, I guess it was mid-June to go to the state site, uh, we were asked to build that out for the month. And so we did that. And what we found that happened was that many people would go online and would register for a test, but they needed to get in sooner, right? We've had the conversation uh, with some residents, right, who needed to get in sooner to get tested. Right. And so they would go ahead and get online, take their first available test, and then they come to our site at the Douglas Public Health Center and get tested. Well, the problem with the website is that it doesn't pull your appointment off and open it up for somebody else. 
And so then what we found was toward the end of July, many of our residents could find no appointments. They would get online, there were no appointments available, even though we were completely able to serve them through the Douglas Public Health Center or some of our pop-up sites. And so what we've learned is that it's better to book out about a week or so in advance and build all those appointments and make people have people be able to schedule them right when they need them. And so I can tell you that for the past week, um, as we've been week, week and a half, that we've been building those appointments for Douglas County, we have not reached capacity um, of what the appointments were available. And so I think that if you were to go online in the last week, you would find number one, it is taking about three or four minutes to register and you are able to find appointments. We are offering, I would say, close to 6,000 appointments across Cobb and Douglas. Uh, I would say probably 2,000 of those are in Douglas County um, a week. Mm -hmm. And so I would challenge our residents that if they need a test today, that they should be able to get one. So I feel like that's improved. It was not at the end of July. At the end of July, it was a pain for all of our residents and our staff because we were there ready to serve and residents were saying we can't get an appointment. And so there was a big disconnect on that. I hope that we fix that. Um, I'd love to hear otherwise if, if it's not working for folks. But right now, every day, we look at the number of appointments that are available to Douglas residents and how many today did they take, and we are not at capacity currently. I, I thank you for the honesty. It, it, it mattered. Uh, I'm good. I yield, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Okay, thank you. Com thank you so much, Commissioner Robinson. Commissioner Guider. Just a, a couple of questions to Ms. Crossman, please. Um, Lisa, um, are there any other ways of testing rather than sticking a, a Q-tip all the way down your throat, I mean, up your nose and into your brain? Uh, I, I'm telling you, I've heard a lot of people say they're not going to go be tested simply because of the method. And I've seen uh, uh, talk or heard talk about the saliva test and a uh, little blood test or whatever. And it's how long is it taken to get the results back on these tests? Uh, Commissioner, thank you. Uh, good, good question. And you're right, those uh, nasopharyngeal samples are uh, tough, right? They're quick and they're relatively painless, but it does feel like um, you've got a Q-tip tickling the back of your brain. Um, <laughs> and so, there's a couple of choices. One, keep in mind that we need to get a good uh, sample, right, of um, secretions to be able to do the test. And so that's important, and that's the first and foremost, the most important thing to do. It is much less invasive than any kind of a blood test, right, to do that. Um, but I will tell you that we are all looking at the state level, um, and we've implemented it with our recent uh, core partnership that we're looking at the shallow nasal swabs to be able to use consistently at all of our test sites. So for example, uh, now at our Wednesday and Friday night for 1 to 7 p.m. at the Douglasville Town Center location um, and this weekend at the Douglas Courthouse location, we will be using a shallow nasal swab uh, method. And so that's where you have uh, the, the person is self-administered. They take a more shallow Q-tip and they, uh, they will kind of twirl it in one nostril, twirl it in the second nostril, and then put that in the sample bag. And that's what's sent off to the laboratory. Um, so I'm hoping that you'll find that those shallow nasal swabs and that the residents will find that those are a little less uncomfortable than the deep nasopharyngeal swabs. Um, but again, keep in mind that the goal is we've got to get a good secretion sample in order to be, do, to be able to do an accurate test. Well, I watched them do uh, give the test to my husband and it made me sick. 
because he was ah. I know. but uh, it was just very uncomfortable looking but um so the saliva test is not coming down the pipeline at all and and you um, didn't answer the question about the turnaround time oh i'm so Get sorry you're right back. Um, so we're not looking at the oral pharyngeal swab right now. Uh, some physician offices do use that, and that's the long um, uh, Q-tips that you may have seen used for when you've had strep tests and things like that, where they do a deep uh, oral pharyngeal sample collection. Um, that's also being used in some uh, physician offices, I understand, but we're not looking at that in our um, drive-through testing sites. So let me answer your question about the test turnaround time. Remember that that was a real challenge for us at the beginning of the pandemic. I would say in May and June, we got that down to uh, 24 to 36 hours of a test turnaround time. As the spread has continued to increase and the demand for testing increased at the end of July, uh, we were seeing um, several days. I mean, we were up to six and seven days of a return time. Um, and so that's not acceptable. Um, I also had somebody call me yesterday that they had gone to a commercial location, gotten their results back, and it had taken 21 days. So that's mm -hmm. not acceptable by any stretch either. Um, and so currently, we're seeing three to six days of a turnaround time from our labs. And that's with the high demand that we're seeing right now. Um, we're working daily to try to get that down. That's not acceptable to us either. Um, our goal is to get it under two days. And so our state folks have tried to sign some additional partnerships with some commercial labs to increase that uh, turnaround or to decrease that turnaround time. Um, I'm hoping that that will have a better response and um, a lot of that we don't have direct control over because we're using commercial laboratories and they're just being inundated with the number of tests that need processing as well. But right now we're at three to six days um, and our goal is to get that down to two. And y'all also do the antibiotic tests? No, ma'am, we do not do the antibody testing right now. Uh, the antibody testing has primarily been through the hospitals who are trying to do some plasma therapy. Uh, I think the Red Cross is offering that, um, but we do not do that through our drive-through testing. All right, thank you. I yield back. Thank you, ma'am. Okay, thank you, Lisa, so much for your presentation. Board of Commissioners, again, I'm glad that we have an opportunity for to uh, um, host this special call meeting this morning simply because we had to just chat about some things that are important such as this public health component certainly did not want us to uh, sit and provide you know create a large list of uh, uh, should I say for lack of a better term a dream sheet this morning and then have this uh, public health component that's uh, certainly pushing us uh, in a different direction. So I wanted to definitely be transparent and I asked Lisa to come to present. Lisa, my question to you, I just have a question. The state uh, the state only allocated so much for you all to, you know, so many funds. Have you tapped out on those funds? Is that what you're implying to the Board of Commissioners? Yes, ma'am. Uh, we continue to ask our state folks for support for a variety of things. Um, and so again, test kits, test laboratory processing, which ends up being close to $100 a person, right, to process these uh, samples. And so we get all of that through our state uh, folks. Um, and they've also helped us through like National Guard helping us at some of our test sites, like the mass locations that you'll, you may have seen down, developing down at the airport. But we, um, and they also have given us some temporary nursing staff so we've gotten a couple of nurses that have helped us, but um, that we've maximized that ask and we've maximized the GEMA ask. And so what we're coming to you for is the stuff that we can't get through them. Okay, and I'm assuming there's no uh, possibility for CARES for public health, right? The CARES well, Act. So the money that is coming down through public health to help cover all of that the test kits and stuff that I just mentioned, um, I understand that that is CARES funding. 
Oh, okay. It's just coming through the state. It's just being yes, ma'am. Okay. Okay. Good response. Uh, Tiffany uh, Stewart Stanley, thank you so much, Lisa. Tiffany Stewart Stanley, if you could provide the Board of Commissioners a, a list of just the, of the items that uh, certainly that they could choose from and add to the list, if you could do that and allow them to submit it back to you and we collect the data. I definitely want to do that. I know I heard small businesses was one uh, that we're looking at and um, I didn't hear a whole lot of uh, additional comments, but if you could do that, uh, Tiffany, just send them just a, a spreadsheet and let them just check off things that they're interested in and we'll see uh, what how it goes. I know you're waiting on the deals, a uh, Senate Deals uh, Act to be approved or disapproved. And also you mentioned the HEROES Act, which would uh, cast a wider net and allow us to have a little more autonomy in terms of spending uh, to offset our revenue and also for, to, uh, for reimbursable expenses. Board of Commissioners, do you have any other comments this morning? Okay. Uh, Tiffany, do you have anything to wrap up before and then I'll yield to our um, county administrator. Tiffany, you have anything else to add? Uh, no, Chairman Jones. Like I will um, follow your instructions and um, and also follow up for the questions for Commissioner Mitchell and Commissioner Robinson. And as soon as I get any information regarding the um, information coming from Congress, I will make sure to update the board and the county administrator and um, give you guys all of your options so you can make an informed decision. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I just been notified by Lisa. You have another presentation. Uh, you have the floor. Uh, certainly, Lisa, I believe you said you want to share something else with the Board of Commissioners. No, thank just you. thank you. Uh, I have another presentation. And I just wanted to check if it was okay if I stepped off or if you had any other questions. But um, let me just wrap up by just saying that we sincerely appreciate the consideration of this. Uh, the Douglas County government staff uh, has been tremendous in our partnership with this um, COVID response. You all have acted well before um, in many other situations to be able to get in front of this on behalf of the residents. So we really appreciate the um, advocacy that you've provided, the support that you and um, Mark and Jason have all provided. Um, and so just thank you for the consideration of this additional ask. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lisa. And the Board of Commissioners, we thank you as well. And we appreciate all the things that public health is doing to sustain the health of our citizens of Douglas County. Okay. County Administrator, do you have any remarks? Okay. Uh, no, ma'am. I, I do not. Our, uh, okay. And I see our attorney, Bernard, on here. I saw you and certainly want to acknowledge you. Uh, attorney Bernard, do you have any? Any comments or anything before I close out? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right, Board of Commissioners, do you have anything else before I close out today? I appreciate you attending this special call meeting. Want to give you an update. Tiffany will provide a list of items to allow you to choose from. Again, we're waiting on the Senate Deals Act to be approved, and hopefully that'll be approved within the next uh, 48 hours. And then also we are waiting on and we will continue to keep you updated regarding the HEROES Act because that is a critical, uh, certainly that would be critical and it would make it benefit this county uh, tremendously. Again, thank you so much for working through the details with us this morning. Uh, certainly sorry if we disappointed you in one way, but again, wanted to provide you with information that's definitely needed to allow you to, as you uh, go in and, and, and make your decisions that we do have a public health component that's over our head that uh, we will uh, definitely need to consider uh, as we continue to provide care to our uh, citizens here in Douglas County. Board of Commissioners, if there's nothing else to come before this body, I want to leave our citizens with, uh, please remember the three W's. We'd love you to continue to wash your hands repeatedly throughout the day, wear your mask as highly as recommended uh, again, and then also watch your social distancing. If there's nothing else to come before this Board of Commissioners, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you so much and have a great day.